Hello Scrafters uh, and welcome to this, the first cast of the 2019 EMS StarCraft League. Um, I'm going to try and be enthusiastic about this cast but unfortunately this is the second time I've casted this game because the first time uh, somehow I managed to not record any sound. So um, who have I got playing? This is Lily in the top left here of the map. This is Disco Bloodbath, the map. Uh, and in the bottom right, I've got Jake. Both players playing Protoss. Uh, the production tab is up in the top left. Um, this is where we can see uh, what all of these players, um, what both of these players are building at any given time. Uh, up at the top here, we can see the supplies, uh, the current supply uh, over the amount of free supply that the players have got. So, top right, um, it's worth looking at. This is where we can see the minerals that the players have got. We can see how much gas they've got. We can also see the supply again. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with StarCraft, down in the bottom here, this is the mini map. This shows you the entire map that we're playing on. Uh, but the only bits that are lit up if you like the only bits where we can see stuff happening are the bits that are visible to the players um, since we're observers in this game we can of course see what both players can see but if i just uh, momentarily show you what lily can see uh, she cannot see anything that is going on in her opponent's base um, until such times as she has got a unit in there so um yeah uh what uh what are we gonna see here what's gonna happen I, i'm gonna you know feign surprise at the strat um because i because i've seen this all already so uh, lily is furiously spamming a worker about the place working on building up that apm very nice um while this gateway finishes up and um, we've also got a forge at the front here just finishing up uh the forge you know this is um, if you were going for some sort of horrible cannon rush, you would go forge first and you'd already have a worker on the other side of the map getting ready to drop those cannons. So this forge most likely for a defensive cannon uh, to keep you safe from any sort of early cheese. Uh, and it's not a bad choice if you're going to go for an early expand. And this is an early expand. You know, to get the, the Nexus done before you've even got a side core is pretty quick. Um, this is the side core that's building. If you're unfamiliar with the way Protoss works, Sidecourt is like the first and most fundamental of the tech structures. So get ways you can build units from, but uh, until you've got a sidecourt, the only unit you can build is a zealot. The sidecourt allows you to build um, other production facilities like the robotics facility that will allow you to build uh, immortals and, and colossus and stuff like that. It'll also allow you to build uh, stargate that you can build flying units from. It will allow you to build tech structures like the Twilight Console where you can get upgrades for your zealots, you can get upgrades for your stalkers. So we can see that Jake has also uh, dropped this expand. Um, and so, you know, a little bit behind, I don't mind that. Um, you know, as Protoss, it's pretty unusual to, to expand extremely early. If you're playing against another Protoss, I'd feel okay to do that, but only if I had scouted uh, sort of outside of my base, this whole area, to check for proxies because you know um protoss uh, a rush from protoss is likely to be uh, proxy zealots or a cannon rush indeed so you know personally i wouldn't generally expand until i check that area and at present neither of these two players have done any scouting but it does look like jake is about to send this worker across the map uh, to have a little look in his opponent's base while he does that i'll show you some of the things that uh, some of the bits of information we can pull up uh, this tab shows me uh, how many units have been killed. This one um, can show me the sort of supply that the two players have got both in fighting units and in workers. I can see that Lily's got a slight uh, lead in worker supply uh, while Jake has got more fighting units. This tab shows me the incomes and uh, as you'd expect, Lily's got a slight edge with slightly more workers. Now, what's interesting here is that this Stargate is building. So that's the first sign of what tech path Lily's gonna go for. And that worker did get up the ramp. So if I uh, just show you what Jake can see, if he looks on the mini map, this is what he'll see if he scrolls across the map. So he can see that there's a gateway. He can see that there's a forge in the two cannons, but this, um, what was building here will be unknown to him unless he clicked on it at the time the worker was there. Uh, and that would have taken pretty quick reactions because these two cannons shut that worker down pretty quickly. So I think it's unlikely that Jake knows about this. Um, we can see that there is a fleet beacon coming down. 
uh, as well. That fleet beacon will mean that from the Stargate you'll have access to these higher tier units, these Tempests and Carriers, which are big, expensive late game units generally. So Fleet Beacon coming down, it looks very likely that Lily is going to be trying to crank out some uh, generally called Sky Toss, where you, where you build a Golden Armada fleet of expensive, very powerful flying units. Um, and that's a common strategy for Protoss. Protoss Air is powerful. Uh, the other thing that Fleet Beacon will allow you to do is to build a mothership, um, and the mothership cloaks your units. So a very, uh, a very powerful, but also very expensive and slow spellcaster. Um, so Lily with the third base coming down, let's go and have a peek over at Jake uh, to see how he's getting on. Um, less in the way of tech happening here for Jake. So upgrades coming from the forge, this is plus one attack. It means all his ground units with every sort of attack they do will do one additional damage. So things like zealots for example um, do eight damage per swipe of their uh, sort of psi blades um, and they do two swipes per attack. So this plus one will mean instead of doing two times it, instead of doing 16 per attack, they will do two times nine and therefore do 18 per attack. So these are useful upgrades. Um, armor works in the same way, but in reverse. So plus one armor means that every attack done to your ground units uh, will do one less damage. So if you like, if one player has plus one attack and the other player has plus one armor, those two upgrades cancel each other out. Uh, so the side core here, um, this is a useful upgrade if you're playing Protoss. Uh, warp gates are good things. If you, it's a cheap upgrade and it doesn't take very long, hundred seconds. So you get this upgrade, it means you can use these, turn these into warp gates, which allows you to uh, basically warp units in at any location where there is a pylon, uh, and that's a useful thing. What we can see coming then from Jake is lots and lots of gateways being built. Um, a single robo. So what I would expect if I saw this is that we would see a warp prism pop out uh, and the warp prism allows you to warp units in at any location from warp gates. Uh, so what I'd expect to see is warp prism come out, fly across the map and warp in large numbers of zealots into this mineral line to get some damage done. Lily, meanwhile, um, as suspected, the tech path is going to be Protoss Air. So an awful lot of gateways. Uh, a good economy up for Lily. She's got three bases up and running, and that's kind of the sweet spot for Protoss. Uh, three fully saturated mining bases is where you want to be. Um, in general, that is pretty common in StarCraft that the number of workers you want is, is roughly 70, um, which is about the amount you've got if you've got three saturated bases. Uh, more than that, and you know the extra income you're getting uh, isn't worth it because you just don't have the supply. The game limits you to a total of 200 supply. And you know if you go up to say 90 workers, well you can only build an army of 110 supply, so you've got a fantastic income. But what are you spending the money on because you can't have that big an army? Uh, so three fully saturated bases allows you a good income, allows you to be able to produce a large number of units um, and it's generally, certainly for Protoss, it is the sweet spot. So uh, three mining bases going on. Um, I don't like this. This is uh, pretty much a travesty. We've got um, a load of cannons being built here to keep our opponents out, but you know, I don't know. There's an awful lot of money has been spent on this. Look how many cannons there are here, plus these pylons. That's an obscene amount of money. If we look at the army supply, I mean, Lily doesn't really have an army at this stage. Um, I, I don't know. I, I just don't see the value in building that many cannons. I, I'd much rather units. You know, these cannons, yeah, they, they will protect you against some sort of attack. Um, but, you know, you're not going to beat your opponent with them. Um, no. With that said, let's go and see what Jake's got. Uh, we've got these 1-1 uh, zealots and stalkers. Um, Jake is going to find life extremely difficult here because yeah he's got a reasonable army, he's got immortals or powerful units, um, he's got these zealots and hopefully no, no charge upgrade yet, that's an important upgrade if you've got a large zealot army, um, it, it's not very expensive either so it's always worthwhile getting that if you're playing Protoss uh, unless you're literally going to build no zealots whatsoever, it's a good upgrade um, so I'd like to see that happening. 
Uh, this isn't a bad army. It's not a terrible army. If you know, let's let's have a look here. 72 army supply, pretty reasonable. If I go into the active forces tab, we can see it's an expensive army as well. Um, but none of it, none of it shoots up apart from this handful of stalkers. Um, Look, Lily building six Tempests at a time. When these Tempests start to come out, I think we're gonna find Jake is in serious, serious trouble because there just there just aren't enough things shooting up. Um, so temporarily supply blocked, he does need to build some extra pylons. Um, you know, where was the, he must construct additional pylons. Where was it? I missed it. Um, so as soon as he gets that sorted out, we'll see these gateways starting to build stuff again. A uh, substantial amount queued up, and you know, at this stage of the tournament, uh, I'm not gonna hit on that too badly, but in general, uh, I, oh dear, chronoing. Chronoing speeds up uh, the rate at which buildings do stuff, but when you're supply blocked and your buildings aren't doing anything, that's just a waste of chrono boost. Um, but I don't like queues, it's a bit of a pet hit. Uh, and the reason I say I don't like them, you know, zealots cost 100 each, there's 400 zealots here, there's 400 minerals worth, sorry, of zealots here, another 400, another 400, and, you know, there are thousands of minerals worth of zealot just queued up. What's the point in that? You could have spent that money on extra gateways and then built all of those zealots simultaneously. Um, so, you know, in general, queues are not a good thing. It's generally not a good sign. But this early in the tournament, if it helps you stay on point with your macro, I'm gonna let it slide. Uh, now, speaking of macro, here we are at the 11 minute mark and Lily does have a substantial army at this stage, up to 185 supply total, uh, with a lot of that being in the form of army. Um, she has rapidly overtaken Jake and, you know, if uh, both of these players doing, to be honest, a pretty reasonable job of macroing, um, what I am disappointed to see is that they're both doing a terrible job of scouting. Neither of them, uh, with the exception of that one probe, Lily hasn't been on the other side of the map at all. She's no idea what's happening. For all, to, you know, for all she knows, her opponent is up on seven bases and is sitting on a 200 supply army of literally just badassery that's gonna absolutely crush this. Um, like as it turns out he isn't but you know she doesn't know that um so no scouting has happened and similarly apart from that initial probe uh jake has no idea what's coming um and it is coming so uh let's see how this engagement goes my fear is it is going to go exceptionally badly because there is just nothing or at least there's very little that shoots up and what's being built you know we've got charge being researched which is great we've got colossus coming out colossus are a great ground unit but they don't shoot up so these tempests are seriously ranged units they're just going to be able to pick off the stalkers in a couple of with a couple of volleys you know look this, these stalkers are just going to pop one by one if we look from jake's point of view of course uh, he can't even see most of this stuff uh, because it's cloaked we need more artosis so you can see that the, these tempests he can't even see the tempests um, uh, and the misery here is that these zealots are just standing getting shot in the face they, they don't even they can't even do anything about this they're just getting ruined so if i was to look at the uh, units lost um none lily hasn't lost any units uh that's a, that's a bit rude isn't it um but you know jake you can't really be too salty about it because you didn't do any scouting I mean, I'd have some sympathy had you had you known it was coming, prepared for it, and lost to it anyway. But you didn't. You, you didn't know what was coming, uh, and so you can't really complain when this stuff turns up. Um, all of these robos that you've built are utterly pointless because nothing from a robo shoots up. So you know, had you been on the other side of the map, had you sent some workers across to see what was coming, had you even built an observer out of one of your robos, sent that across the map you would have known that this was on its way and you could have built units that shoot up accordingly. You might not have won, you might have though, who knows? Um, but you can't complain if you don't scout. Right, GG. Hopefully this time I have recorded the sound and uh, I'm gonna get stuck in the game too very shortly.